So today I'm going to talk about dual targeting of CD19 and CD22 on B cell leukemia using a single bispecific chimeric antigen receptor. As you all have heard today, um, even CD19 CAR treatment of leukemia has demonstrated very promising clinical result. But still, approximately 10% of patients will relapse due to loss of CD19 epitope. And also, CD19 negative escape has been seen in bleed and tumor map treated patient. So single target therapy may select for escape uh, variants. But simultaneously, targeting of multiple antigens may reduce the likelihood of resistance due to the single antigen loss. As you know, CD19 and CD22 are expressed on majority of B-cell leukemia, but their expression level can vary widely. This will bring challenges for treating with just a single targeting. So conceptually, if we target on both CD19 and CD22 with a bispecific chimeric antigen receptor, they could really enhance the avidity and may result in a synergistic effect and reduce the likelihood of the relapse and could also provide a more broadly active therapy to patients who has heterogeneous expression of the uh, CD19 and CD22. This dot plot show you this uh, patient has very heterogeneous expression of CD19 and CD22. And uh, these are in log scale. You can see CD19 has generally higher expression density comparing with CD22, but they can vary widely. This is a schematic um, diagram showing you the bispecific car structure. Simply, the CD19 and CD22's binding domain were derived from the anti-CD19 anti or anti-CD22 monoclonal antibody. And these binding domains were connected with different linkers and then connected with a transmembrane domain and eventually linked with a co-stimulation and CD3 zeta signaling domain. Upon binding of this tumor-specific antigen, T cell will be activated and mediate cytolysis uh, lysis against the tumor. I want you to pay attention. You see the CD22 binding domains are specific to the CD22 antigen. That is, uh, that antigen domains are located very close to the leukemia cell. So that may mean this uh, CD22 SCFV may, de may need to stretch further to, in order to reach the target epitope. As uh, Dr. Fry just reported, besides CD19 CAR, um, our branch has made a very highly active CD22 CAR currently in clinical trial. So the most logical way will be put CD19 and CD22 binding domains in tandem and make them into a single construct. But there are many ways to putting them together, like which binding domain should be placed first, and how long the linker should be. These are several constructs we have made. Interestingly, the only functional one is the one that has uh, CD22 binding domains located further from the uh, membrane. That's a 10 car one. But when we switch the order of CD19 and CD22 binding domains, like in 10 car 2, the car does not work. Even more surprisingly, when we replace the linker in between the CD22 binding domains, like in 10 car 3, the car also does not work. The top plot show you the 10 car 
has similar transduction efficiency comparing with the single cars. You can see 10 car 2 express only CD19 car, but 10 car 1 exp express both CD19 car and CD22 car. And those events are displayed in diagonal. Um, they may indicate they have equal molar of expression. The lower right panel illustrating this uh, 10 car has a similar fold expansion in vitro. The lower right panel is a chromium release assay with 10 car 1. You can see 10 car 1 um, have cytolac uh, has specific cytolytic activity against either CD19 or CD22 single antigen or both antigen, but has no activity against NGFR expressing cell. And then we test these 10 cars by using a NOM6 xenograph model. And you can see, uh, not surprising, 10 car 2 really doesn't have much activity but Tenkar 1 has quite potent activity against this uh, CD19 positive and CD22 positive leukemia line. And then we used a more clinical relevant cell line. This is a slower progression of the uh, patient derived xenograph line. It's a GH331. It expressed both CD19 and CD22. And 10 car 1 can completely eradicate the leukemia in vivo. IL-2 has been considered as a quite a reliable marker for 10, 10 cars uh, T cell function. So we look at this uh, IL-2's production. Unfortunately, this 10 car 1 produce only minimal amount of IL-2 upon you know, when co-incubated with CD22 expression K562. So we decided Tenkar-1 is not a good, good candidate for dual targeting of bo both CD19 and CD22. So we went ahead and made a bispecific loop car. So unlike the um, tandem car, which may fold sequentially, the loop car flip back to align the CD19 and CD22 domain together. This may provide a more tighter structure. And then we look at the cytokine production in vitro. You can see it made plenty of IL-2. It made even more IL-2 compared with the single uh, CD19 car. It's also active when they see CD 22 expression cell. So we went ahead and tested in vivo. Uh, it's the same NOM6 xenograph model. And loop car, you see this is the relative low dose of car. And loop car has uh, demonstrated comparative potency to CD19 and CD22 car, single cars. So in order to further verify the loop car's function against the single antigen, we went ahead and used the CRISPR technology to knock out the CD19 on NOM6. As you can see on this uh, CD19 knockout clone, CD19's production is really undetectable, but they remain, the CD22's expression remains normal. So we used this CD19 knockout line and tested it in vivo. Unfortunately, it could not clear the leukemia. This, you know, this is really surprising. And then we went ahead and we have a patient-derived xenograph line. This, pa this patient has been treated, previously treated with blinotumumab and they then relapsed with two populations of CD19. One is CD19 low and the other one is CD19 high. And this, this patient-derived xenograph line also expressed normal CD22. So we use this 
PDX, and tested in vivo. You can see the mice treated with the loop car remain disease-free up to day 49, while the non-treated group are all died around day 35. So in conclusion, the order of CD19 and CD22 binding domain, as well as the length of the linker, really affect the function of the bispecific car. Both bispecific car can eradicate leukemia in the uh, preclinical xenograph model. The bispecific car demonstrate evidence of activity against both CD19 and CD22, but optimization is still ongoing. Finally, I'd like to thank Dr. Terry Fry and Dr. Chris Domeco for their advice and support, and also thanks all the lab, my coworkers, the clinical staff, and our collaborators for their contribution and help. Thank you. <laughs>